every single thing that has ever happened to you or will ever happen to you is a good thing. There are no exceptions to this rule. Every single event that occurs in reality, no matter how negative it appears to be on the surface, always ends up being a good thing in the end. This is called the advantage method. When you learn to adopt this mindset of seeing the advantage in every single situation, then you'll be able to reap the advantage of every single situation. And this will just help you very practically in your life because every single day we run into all sorts of things that appear to be problems. Like, for example, today I came all the way out here in nature to record my video and then I went to go check my bag and I realized that I forgot my microphone at home. So normally this would be a problem. And normally I would focus on the negative and I would think, oh shit, I forgot my microphone so now I can't record my video and now I'm just going to be sad and I'm going to give up the whole thing. And that wouldn't be very productive of me. That I would be focusing on the negative in this scenario and then I would reap the negative in this scenario. But instead, what I did was I chose to focus on the positive of the scenario. What's the advantage of forgetting my microphone at home? Well, one advantage is that now I have a good example to use in the video. <laughs> so I focused on the positive and I got the positive. You see, your mind creates reality by focusing your attention on whatever you want to create. So why do things like visualization work so well for helping you to create the life of your dreams? The reason why visualization is amazing is because normally throughout your day, you're not really focusing on your ideal life scenario. Instead, what if you're like most people, you're focusing on just the mundane events of life. What you're going to eat for dinner, what's on TV, what is on your social media feed, what problems you have, what fires you have to put out. So when you focus your attention on putting out fires in your life, solving short term problems, and all you think about is short term problems, then you're going to actually end up creating more and more short term problems in your life. But instead, if you focus your attention on, let's say, a long term vision, when you focus your attention on the positive aspects of any scenario in your life, then those positive aspects grow and expand. So imagine every single event that occurs in reality is neutral. From the highest, most ultimate perspective, you could say from God's perspective, everything that happens is neutral. It's not good or bad. You see, things are only good or bad when you look at them from a selfish perspective. When you look at an event from the perspective of an ego, from the perspective of what's in it for me, then it appears good or bad. So let's say you're driving and you get into a car accident. Obviously, since you're selfish and you're the one who's paying for the insurance, you have to go through this whole hassle of fixing your car, you might get sued, you might have to deal with all of these unwanted things. That's why you judge this event of getting into a car accident as bad. Because you, as an ego, don't like it. But in reality, in truth, all events are neutral. There are no good or bad events. Even terrible, heinous things like, for example, the Holocaust. Terrible. Millions of people murdered. The worst thing ever. Only from the perspective of a selfish ego who obviously doesn't like murder 
and doesn't like genocide. Those things are terrible for our survival as egos. However, you could say, you could say from the highest perspective or even from God's perspective, even something as heinous and terrible as the Holocaust is something that is neutral and actually is occurring for the highest good with a capital G. Now you might say, Adam, are you serious? Like the Holocaust, the highest good? There's absolutely no way. Well, the reason why I use such an extreme example is because you have to understand, if it wasn't for the highest good, it wouldn't have happened. Let's look at some potential advantages of the Holocaust. And I know this is a sensitive topic, but we're just, I'm trying to demonstrate this deep principle that's really going to be helpful for you in your life. So what are some potential advantages of the Holocaust? You can brainstorm this with me. Actually, you can get out a piece of paper and write down what, what are the good things that came out of the Holocaust? So one of them, for example, might be that genocide is something that is not tolerated anymore in the world. This is collectively, as an entire species, this terrible example of Hitler and of the Nazis, this is such a poignant example of evil and corruption that now collectively as a species, we've basically agreed to not let shit like that happen ever again. So that could be one advantage that now something that heinous and terrible is unlikely to occur again in the future because we've collectively decided from experiencing how terrible the Holocaust was. Now we've collectively decided to create a new thing in our reality, which is no more genocide. So even like, for example, a book like Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, Viktor Frankl, he was put in, he was put into the concentration camps and he witnessed basically his whole family get killed. I think his brother got killed, his mom got killed, his dad got killed, his grandfather got killed, and he was put through inhuman things. Like he had to shovel the ashes of the dead bodies of the Jews and he had to shovel them like and clean the moat with his hands like that's hell that's that's the worst thing ever but yet something positive came out of that because Viktor Frankl in this terrible heinous negative the worst situation you could possibly think of he had a deep realization about himself and about the nature of human beings his realization that is that regardless of how negative a situation is, you have one right that can never be taken away from you. He called this the last of the human freedoms. They can strip away all of your freedom and force you to shovel ashes of your dead family members and, and starve you and scorn you, but nobody can take away your, your last freedom, which is your ability to respond to situations. All of your freedoms can be taken away, but one freedom that you have as a conscious creator of your reality can never be taken away. As a human being, you always have the choice. You reserve this choice. This, this choice can never, ever, ever, ever be taken away from you. The choice to respond to experience and to choose how I'm going to take this experience. This is the essence of the advantage method, which I'm going to be sharing with you now. So what is the advantage method? This is something that I discovered by reading Vadim Zeeland's book, Reality Transurfing, which I love that book. It explains a lot of the deep energetic mechanics of how life works and a lot of things that you really won't read in a science textbook or anything like that. So I was reading Reality Transurfing 
And I was actually reading the sequel to that book called Tufty the Priestess. Both of them I highly recommend reading. They're like manifestation Bibles. And in the book Tufty the Priestess, there's this concept called the advantage method, where basically she says that anything that happens to you, always look for the advantage. And she breaks it down into five steps, which I'm going to share with you now. So in order to apply the advantage method in your life, notice a problem. So the best time to apply the advantage method is when you notice yourself judging a part of reality as being negative. And you have to watch yourself throughout the day because every single day, I guarantee you, you're going to find yourself judging a part of reality as being negative. So you have plenty of time to practice because all day you're judging parts of reality as being negative. It could be in your finances. It could be you're getting bills. It could be in your relationship. You get into an argument with your family. You lose followers on social media or whatever it is. Whenever you judge a part of reality as being negative, maybe you're driving, you're, you have to get on work to work on time, but there's massive traffic. There's a huge traffic jam. And you say, fuck this traffic jam. This is a really bad thing. It's going to make me late to work. So whenever you're judging any part of reality as being bad or negative, step one is to wake up and remember who you are. So wake up and, and realize who you are. Oh, I'm a human being. I'm alive. I'm free. I, I'm living in a dream. I get to choose what I want my reality to be. I'm not a victim of my reality. I'm not just a character running on a script. I'm, I get to compose my reality. I get to choose what I want to create. So wake up. What I like to do is meditation. You can just look at your hands. Say, oh, I'm here. When you're lost in the dream of Maya, you forget that you, you even exist. You're just a character functioning on a script. You're like an NPC. So step one, when something bad happens to you, wake up. Remember who you are. Step two is to think about potential advantages of this negative thing. So, okay, I'm driving to work and there's a traffic jam. How could this be a potential advantage? Well, maybe this will give me some more time to just chill out and listen to an audiobook. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll be late to work, but at least I'll have an extra 10 minutes to listen to this audiobook that I've really been enjoying. Okay, so that might be a plausible advantage for you. And then step three is to reap the advantage of this negative situation. And that happens automatically. So once you realize that there actually is an advantage to this negative situation, then the advantage reaps itself. It just kind of happens right when you focus your attention on the positive, the positive reaps itself because the positive expands and grows in your life just by focusing your attention on it. So the essence of what we're doing here is we're focusing our attention away from what we don't want and on to what we do want. This is very deep. It might take you 20 years to, to learn this, this one point that I'm sharing here. All of law of attraction all of success, all of spirituality, all of everything. It boils down to this right here. Instead of focusing your attention on what you don't want to create and fighting against it and resisting it and being afraid of it and being angry with it, instead of that, try focusing your attention on what you do want instead. So I actually skipped a step. I was tricking you guys. <laughs> I honestly forgot. So after you wake up and you realize that, that you're awake, so before you go to look for potential positive advantages, you have to fully accept the negative thing. So 
It's very important that you don't reject negative things and you don't try to hide them and you don't try to not focus on them. Like for example, let's say you're really having a lot of worrying thoughts about money. This is something that I was worrying a lot about when I was starting my business, worrying a lot about money. And what I would try to do since I was interested in the law of attraction, I would try and not think about worrying about money. I would just try to like sweep it under the rug and not think about it at all. That doesn't actually work because that's reactive and that's coming from a place of fear where you're trying to avoid thinking about this uncomfortable thing. So step one, notice a problem. Step two, wake up, realize who you are. Step three, accept the problem fully. So Except that this thing is real. So I'm, I'm in a traffic jam. Yeah, I'm actually in a traffic jam right now. I'm not going to lie to myself and pretend like I'm not in a traffic jam when I am. So accept the truth. Four is to look for the advantage. So how could this traffic jam potentially be a benefit? So maybe I'm listening to my audiobook. I have more time to listen to it. Or maybe I can call my grandmother on the phone and chat with her for 10 minutes while I'm waiting in this traffic jam. And then step five is that if you can't find an advantage to the negative situation, then just trust that it is positive and just accept that it's going to be positive anyways. So sometimes it's hard to find a tangible advantage in a negative situation like Maybe you have bills that are way past overdue. And that's, that was my situation a few years ago. And you might think, well, how could this be a positive thing? But <laughs> just tr I would just trust that this is a positive thing. I don't know how, but it's definitely going to be a positive thing. And then I would notice that since my bills were past overdue, this thing would happen where my card would get charged by subscription services that I totally forgot that I had subscribed to and I wasn't paying attention to. I wasn't being conscious with my money. I was just kind of spending it frivolously. So I was getting charged by subscription services that I realized that I didn't even want. So they would send me emails like, sorry, we couldn't charge your card. And then I would realize, oh, I actually don't want you to charge my card. So then I would cancel the the subscription so even though you might think it's a negative thing so that you know you have overdue bills and your card is maxed out but that's actually a positive thing because it allowed me to be more conscious of where my money was going and it actually let me kind of clean out my spending habits and that actually happened a few times. I didn't realize that that was going to be the advantage, but I trusted that there was definitely some advantage in this negative situation, and I reaped the positive thing anyways. So this is the advantage method. It works extremely well because it helps you keep your energy in a positive state. So all the results that are occurring in your physical reality are a reflection of your inner state. Like for example, two days ago, I was a little bit frustrated. I honestly forgot what I was frustrated about. I was just in a frustrated mood. I was just angry in general. And I noticed that since I was in a frustrated mood, other people would start picking fights with me. People online were picking fights with me. My friends were picking fights with me. And I was wondering like, why is everyone trying to fight with me today? But I didn't realize this because my energy was already in a fighting mood. I was like a frustrated person. And that energy, people would pick up on that subconsciously. This is all subconscious. And then they would intentionally provoke me in some way to kind of help me realize this truth that, hey, you, 
why are you in such a grumpy mood? Because <laughs> subconsciously in my thoughts, I was the one that was picking fights with reality itself, picking fights with other people. And then I was complaining that other people were picking fights with me, but really it was just my own energy reflected back to me. So the advantage method helps you to keep your energy in a neutral or positive state. Because normally when a problem happens in our life, we focus all of our energy and attention onto the problem and we blow it up. We blow it out of proportion. Like, oh, this is such a big problem. No, now I'm ruined. Now nothing's going to work. I'm so angry about this. I wish this wasn't happening. And now you're in a more negative state. And when you're in that negative state, then you're going to experience more problems. And the problems that you already have are going to start getting worse and worse. So when we use the advantage method, we're able to shift our attention and our energy to thinking, well, this isn't a negative thing. This is definitely a positive thing. Because remember, every single thing that happens in reality is a positive thing. Guaranteed. I can guarantee you that one. Every single thing that happens in reality is a positive thing. Guaranteed. Every single time. No exceptions. If, if you don't believe it yourself, just take my word for this one. And normally I don't ask you to take my word for things. Take my word for this one. Every single thing that happens is a positive thing guaranteed all the time. So your only job is just to trust that this negative thing is going to be a positive thing. And actually observe it being positive. So confirm what I'm saying for yourself. <laughs> so step one is to just believe me. But then step two is actually to observe in your own life how problems always, always end up being good things in the future. Even if they just serve to strengthen your character and give you more experience and grow you as a person. Negative things are positive things. <laughs> There is no good and bad. There's just good with a capital G <laughs> and one O, <laughs> God. <laughs> and there's only God. And God is good. Not religious God, guys. I'm not talking about Christianity. I'm talking about the universe, source, infinite potentiality, infinite intelligence, the self, the source of your being. The, what's in your heart I'm talking about what the universe is made of the oneness it's oneness if think about it if reality is made of oneness then there can't be good and bad there's just only good only love and then you might say well adam why isn't there only bad because you might because there's like this this coin right good and bad and you might say well adam why is it all good why isn't the universe all bad I don't know, guys. Look at this tree over here. <laughs> There's like butterflies and stuff. How could that be bad? <laughs> so the natural state of existence is love and beauty and goodness. Just the fact like if you abandon a city and you all the people leave within a hundred years, that city is going to be overgrown into a beautiful forest. <laughs> with animals and fruits growing off the trees. It's like the Garden of Eden. So the natural state of reality is good with a capital G. When you let go and surrender selfishness, when you surrender the problem mind, surrender egotism, you just let go, surrender. Stop striving to make your reality better. Just receive reality exactly as it is now 
That's what I like to do. I like going to the park, lying on the grass, and just receiving reality exactly as it is without fighting against it or trying to change it or trying to check my phone or get some entertainment or move to the next moment or improve my situation. Instead of that, when you relax and receive reality exactly as it is now, you start to feel amazing. You feel fulfilled. This is counterintuitive. You'd think that in order to gain fulfillment in my life, then I have to do stuff to get me fulfilled. But counterintuitively, when you do absolutely nothing at all and you stop doing stuff, and that doesn't mean play video games and eat junk food, that means stop doing everything. Stop even thinking, which is easier said than done, but like with meditation, for example, just lie on the grass, relax and surrender. I have a whole video called how to practice surrender. Check that video out. When you let go of everything, then the only thing that's left is love, goodness, consciousness, awareness. It's solid. It's empty, but it's solid. It's, it's grounded. It can't be pushed because there's no self. When you surrender yourself and your self-will, then nothing can affect you anymore because there's no self for it to affect. So any problem that happens in your reality just kind of goes through you and turns into a solution. Because only a separate self can have problems. <laughs> but there actually is no separate self. It's just oneness. You're imagining yourself to be a character. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not bad. You don't have to destroy the ego. <laughs> We're not trying to annihilate the ego. We're just trying to temporarily surrender this egotistical chasing drive that is trying to always convince you that reality is not good enough. That something needs to be added. Something needs to be improved. That's okay sometimes. Like if I'm trying to be productive or work on business or whatever, it's okay to want to improve your life. That's actually very natural to want to improve your life. But there's a difference between this egotistical chasing and, and surrendering and just allowing yourself to take spontaneous natural action that's coming out of stillness. Just surrender. Let stillness move you. You might say, Adam, that makes no sense. How can stillness move you? That makes absolutely no sense at all. Stillness and movement are the same thing. There's like divine stillness. When you just sit and be still, you can do this now. Just sit, stop moving. Stop moving your body. Stop fidgeting, adjusting. Just, just don't move. Stay still. When you stop moving your body for, let's say, 20 minutes straight, that's a simple meditation. Just sit, don't move. You realize I'm the creator of my reality. I get to choose whether or not I react to my craving to fidget or my craving to move. I decide whether I react to that or respond to that by making the executive decision to be still. Ramana Maharshi said the quickest way to realize the self is to be still. 
when you be still, the movement still happens on the background of stillness, but then you realize non-duality that stillness is movement. It's the nature of divine stillness to move and to create reality. <laughs> That's why Lao Tzu says, nature never hurries, yet all things are accomplished. All right, so that was the advantage method. Actually apply it in your life. Look for the advantage in little situations that seem like problems and you'll find that when you start looking for the advantage, you'll start finding the advantage more and more and you'll start reaping the advantage. This is an extremely helpful mindset for creating your reality. It's like starting an online business, for example, was something that kind of forced me to learn the advantage method because online business is something that can be scary and we can get neurotic about it, perfectionistic, feel like an imposter or just all of your impurities come to the surface when you start working on something like online business or even dating. So I was forced to learn the advantage method because every time I, let's say, do a sales call and it, it wouldn't go well, I had to remind myself, hey, it's okay that this didn't go well because something good is going to come out of this. This is a good thing. If I didn't learn the advantage method, I would have went crazy and I would have quit a long time ago. So every negative thing that happens to me is actually a positive thing. And that's why my life is amazing because n bad things can't happen. And when they do happen, I, I kind of am just curious to see how this is going to turn out to be a positive thing. And it always does every single time because I've actually noticed that every time bad things turn into good things because <laughs> goodness is all there is. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. I have an announcement. I just announced the Conscious Creator community. You can click the link in the description to join the wait list. That's a community where I'm going to be leading a group of people towards discovering their life's deepest purpose, the thing that their heart most wants to actualize in this lifetime. I'm gonna help them turn that into a practical plan and eventually start an online business around the thing that they're most passionate about. This is something that is extremely powerful for your spiritual growth. Even it just helps you solve your finances permanently. This is not something that you can do in a month. This is a six to 12 month process. Even it's a year, it's years, it takes years to set yourself up in a way for you to turn your passion into a career. However, there are principles that you can follow where if you align yourself to these principles, then it makes the process run a lot smoother and a lot easier. So in that community, I share all of those principles. The advantage method is one of them. We talk about using your mindset in a conscious way as a conscious creator and then we also talk about practical business, online business strategy, marketing, marketing strategy, making free content, email lists, building sales pages, building products, selling, how to sell, how to deliver a service that gets people results, how to write about your products in a way that gets people interested, all that stuff. So check out that in the link in the description. Join the wait list. It's launching in a few weeks. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this, this video. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next one.